better. How about that? Yeah, look better. Jeez. This is ridiculous. This thing is huge. Alright. So let's get into it. What's going on, guys? My name is CJ. Some of you may know me as Kryptonic Loser off of Thingiverse. I'm the guy behind the featured Best of the Week collections on Thingiverse. Um, and because of that, GearBest reached out to me and asked me if I would like to do a review on a printer. And, of course, I said yes. Um, I told them, I said I've never done a review before. And uh, they were cool with it. And they told me, they said, go ahead and pick out whatever printer you want. And we'll send it to you. And I knew I wanted a, a larger frame printer. And I was looking around, and the CR10 was pretty much out because I knew that one is so ever reviewed right now. But then the Alpha Wise U20 came into my my perspective, and I said, let's go with the Alpha Wise U20. And being that it was from GearBest, I thought it was fitting that GearBest reached out to me. So what you see in front of you is the GearBest. Alpha Wise U20. This is made by GearBest actually. And this is the second printer from GearBest. So, showed up at my door, straightforward unboxing. I uh, unboxed it, assembled it, and it actually took me longer to unbox it than it did to assemble it. Assemble it. But uh, maybe five, ten minutes at the most to assemble it. Uh, a few screws for the upper carriage. Uh, some plug and play items that's pretty much it and they sent, sent me uh, I think it was a half half kilo of uh, red PLA filament and I've never gotten more than just a coil of filament at a time so I was like I'm actually going to use this for some prints and I threw in the uh, micro SD card that they provided which had some test prints on it some test files and I decided to give it a go and this is one of the first that came off of it, which is the DNA Tower, which came out pretty much perfect right off the bat. And then I moved on to the Bullet, which was on the SD card. And that's when I realized how nice a print it actually does. But... As you'll see on this one, on the owls, the raft is still on there. Every file on the SD card provided has a raft. And I didn't know if it was the filament that came with it or what, but all of the prints I did from the SD card with the provided PLA, the rafts were pretty much glued the prints and as you can see with the bullet it really doesn't like to stand up and I decided not to even take it off the owls but for print quality on the owls is amazing it has a little bit of salmon skinning a little bit of stringing on the top and I mean it's it's pretty dang good I mean it is it's spot on and I actually really like the color of that red I'm not a huge red fan but it's it's kind of almost a candy apple and it, and it almost like looks like it has some pearlescence in it but it's a nice red and it's a shame that it was not giving me the greatest prints out of it but then I was like you know what maybe it's just the files itself so I got on Cura made a profile based off of uh, the CR10 and decided to start printing some of my own files well not my own files but files you can download anywhere and of course then I did what anybody else would do and made up the Benchies now the Benchie it turned out pretty pretty dang good besides the salmon skin and after that I mean the bottom layer seemed pretty squished even though the bed was leveled pretty dang good um, 
and the salmon skin effect was pretty noticeable, but it's a solid machine. And I uh, threw in some little bit of other filaments in that just to see how it would do with some silver in that, and I got the same effect. Um, and then I went and went back to the red that they supplied me with, and I decided to go with a reindeer because it was coming up Christmas time and I figured I would do some reindeer for giveaway as some Christmas gifts so I did this reindeer with the red that was supplied and that's when I realized just how brittle that PLA was that they supplied me with and I've broken the horns off of this thing twice now I re-glued it but other than that I mean it's what it is. Uh, people have told me that the filament that comes with them, that comes with the printer is always crappy and I've never used it until now. I always just usually throw the coil to the side and use it as a cold pull method, but that's about it. Um, it's still got quite a bit of salmon skin effect on it, but then I was like, well, I'm going to go back to my stash of PLA and print a few more of the reindeer and uh, give them away as Christmas gifts. I decided to hang this on to this one as my for myself. So I gave all the other ones away, of course, for Christmas gifts. They were Christmas gifts, so I gave them all away. After that, I noticed really, really bad that... Uh, the bed was kind of in the center, in the center of the bed it was kind of like it was warped and I'm thinking, and I started thinking that maybe the whole sheet of glass was warped and I was just about to go cut my own sheet of glass for it and I was like well maybe I ought to just try to flip the bed and I flipped the bed and I checked it with the roller on the side and I mean it's true flat on this side of the bed so I was like I'm just going to print on this side of the glass then, on the smooth side, and so something's going on with the, with the PEI, um, with the PEI side of the, the bed, I don't know, it's, it doesn't appear that there's an air bubble that I can see, and it seemed like it progressed worse over time, um, but it's just there towards the center, and I don't know if it's thicker there towards the center or what, but I gave up on that side of the bed. I'll probably just eventually peel that off and if I do get a PEI sheet, I'll go with a different sheet or else buy the same sheet maybe that is even on it and just redo it. But for that sheet, I call it quits on that side of the bed. But for that this side of the glass bed, it I re-leveled it and it prints absolutely fantastic now. Um, I should go in and reprint these test files again, but I deleted them off the SD card and I could probably find them somewhere, but I'm not a huge worry about them. I have printed something with a wrap and the wrap came off just fine after that. So I thinking it's maybe a combination of the settings that were in the uh, that were on the uh, test files and a combination maybe of the bed itself. But from there, I went and decided to scale it up a bit and I did a couple other things for Christmas and um, then I noticed that it was giving me a really bad salmon skin effect and I finally decided that it was time to throw in some TL smoothers and when I cracked open the case for the power supply, I noticed that there was this vent in there and that vent was just in a spot for just the fan pretty much just to blow it out the side and I thought that was kind of weird because the vent itself is very it's not making it to where the air can circulate to all over all the boards that are in there and give the proper cooling that I thought there, it's a huge positive that there's a fan in there and it's blowing on the cooling, it's blowing the cooling in there, but 
I think the cooling could be improved and actually just taking this vent out has improved the cooling and has improved the airflow dramatically because now you can actually feel the airflow on both sides coming out as before it was just exiting out of this front corner right here. So I just got rid of the vent and that could either be maybe a new design can be come up with or the factory can just get rid of it completely. I mean, I, I think it's completely pointless. But um, then the next thing was, well, I threw the TL smoothers in and then decided to print, well, another Bentley, of course. And after that, uh, the results pretty much speak for itself. It's gotten rid of pretty much all the salmon skin. And I would say that the the quality is right up there with my with my Ender 3. I mean, it is pretty daggone spot on with layer consistency. There's no no shifting, no banding, no nothing. And I mean, it is it's it's spot on. Um. So after Christmas and that was over, after I got all my my gifts in that printed. I finally decided to really scale it up and what you see in front of you is a vase, printed in vase mode, almost completely maxed out to the highest Z height. And after I got it off the build plate, I was extremely blown away. But if you can't tell, this has water in it. This thing is watertight, no joke. This is printed with uh, Maker Geeks filament PET, or uh, Maker Geeks PETG filament, and uh, it's it's just amazing. It's watertight. I've never had a base come off right off the build plate. It's, it's watertight. Um, yeah, I mean it speaks for itself right there. Uh, it took six and a half hours to print and no post processing, nothing. But uh, then. I didn't want to give up on this poor guy, but I finally gave up on it, and that's the spool holder that comes with it. I really like the design, not so much the inside of the design, but the outside, how it has that almost glow-like look to it, but my spools were just getting stuck on the ridges and that on inside, and I decided it was time to go and just junk it and I was having so many issues with things getting stuck that I went and printed uh, just a spool holder everything was printed on the U20 and I mean it works flawless for what I needed and after that my next print that I didn't even get a chance to install yet this is the same exact thing that I have on my Ender 3 that works flawlessly for if you know your Ender 3 you know you get a bit of bite from your filament going in. Well, I'm getting that same thing on the filament sensor, the filament runout sensor, that the filament is actually eroding away a little path. Well, I figured it was time to print this, and this little thing is just going to go right here, and it's going to direct it to a less sharper of a path to hopefully stop that because not only is that the little sensor right there this thing this bracket is just 3d printed itself and it's going to eat right through that over time so that being said I mean besides a few tweaks here and there um, there's a little bit of another upgrade I did was this was probably the biggest upgrade that you need to do and that is the cable strain relief on the back of the bed because the bed cables are directly soldered onto the bed and if you think about it when this thing is going back and forth and back and forth throughout a print those things are going to fail eventually and when they do fail your bed is going to be pretty much trashed because it's going to be a nightmare to get them to solder back into place even if you are able to do it, it's going to be extremely weak joint. So just do yourself the favor, 
one of your very first prints is print this little uh, print this little guy right here and all this is is it bolts on your under one of your uh, level screws and a couple zip ties and that's your strain relief right there now you don't even have to worry about that I mean it's one thing that they can come from the factory just like the Ender 3 did so other than that it's I mean that's pretty much all my my negatives really about it um, I have so many positives the, the build volume is, is definitely my positive uh, it's a 24 volt system which means everything heats up extremely fast the massive build bed, bed heats up so fast sometimes it'll heat up before the nozzle now sometimes I only print the bed at 40 degrees and it might reach to temp before the nozzle will um, <clears throat> next is the interface and that is the touch screen interface I have an absolute love with the touch screen I mean it's 2019 everything should have a touch screen now and they stepped up their game and for a budget printer if you want to go as a budget printer this has a touch screen interface and it can't be any simpler to use it tells you everything you need to know right on here and to load a file it's as simple as going into your files and opening it to heat up your extruder it's as simple as hitting your extruder button and tapping a positive and negative to cool it down the only peeve I have about that is the heating up the extruder I feel like it could be addressed a little bit because to get it to heat up you have to sit here and tap it and tap it and tap it now you can set this little bar over here from 1 to 5 to 10 yeah that's great but you still have to sit here and tap it until you get it to your design designated town but I think that it could be addressed and I think it'd be a little sweet if you had it come up in an interface with a little slider bar to where you just boop and you're good so other than that um, the interface is amazing prints are coming out amazing the only other thing that I have a little artifacting with now is just I'm feeling like one of my wheels is something's going on with it it's nothing in the v groove i think it's just one of my wheels or one of my bearings something's going on with which is just an easy fix to replace or a little bit of oil but i mean that's it this thing has just been a workhorse for me and my next step is to see if if it can lift the fame uh i feel like that's such a a really good test for a printer is to really see if if it can lift the fan and my Ender 3 can. I even got my uh, A9 A6 to be able to lift the fan after quite a bit of tweaking, but I don't think this needs it. I think it'll do it right out of the box. So that's pretty much it. That's my uh, that's my full review. And if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. I'll post all the links to the files that I have on here in the uh, comments, all the upgrades that I've done in the comments. Um, and I will also post the link to the current link to the uh, where you can buy this at the cheapest cost that I can get for a coupon on it and any other awesome deals that I might be able to get for you down in the description below so be sure to check them out and give it a like let me know I did a good job so I hope you guys have an awesome day and we'll see you next time